All right. So um, today we're going to take a deep dive into something that's been puzzling a lot of people. Yeah. Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha, mm -hmm. he is uh, sitting on a mountain of cash. Wow. Over $325 billion to be exact. Oh, wow. And this Fortune Magazine article that we're looking at explores why. Okay. Now, you'd think with the market being so hot, especially like tech stocks soaring, he'd be putting that money to work. Right. Yeah. You would think he'd be all over it. Exactly. So why is he holding back? Mm -hmm. Is he seeing something that maybe the rest of the market is missing? Yeah. It's definitely raising eyebrows. Yeah. This is a man who's built his reputation on being a very astute and active investor. Exactly. So <sighs> to understand like why he's doing this, yeah. we need to go back to Buffett's core investment philosophy, right? Exactly. He's a value investor yeah. through and through. Through and through. He looks for companies with solid fundamentals, strong earnings, good management, mm -hmm. companies that are intrinsically valuable. Regardless of those like short term market trends. Right. He's famously said that he doesn't invest in things that he doesn't understand. Which makes his massive stake in Apple all the more interesting. Right. Right. Tech isn't exactly, you know. It's not easy to grasp. Easy to grasp. Yeah. You know, and what's even more surprising is that Berkshire Hathaway has actually been selling off some of that Apple stock recently. Really? Yeah. So let's unpack this Apple sale a little bit. Okay. There are two main theories that the experts in the article put forward. Okay. One is that Apple simply became like too big a portion of Berkshire's portfolio. Right. Right. Classic diversification principle. Yeah. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Right. Even if that basket is like Apple. Exactly. Even if that basket is Apple. But the other theory is even more intriguing. Uh -huh. Buffett and his team might think that Apple is currently overvalued. Oh, interesting. So this gets to the heart of Buffett's long-term perspective. Exactly. He's not chasing those quick gains. No. He's looking at what a company is truly worth. Mm-hmm like based on its earnings potential and not just, you know, the market hype surrounding it. The hype, yeah. So while the market is celebrating all these record highs, Buffett might be thinking, hold on, things are getting a little frothy. Right. Almost like he's waiting for a correction. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time he did that. Right. You know, he sat out the dot-com boom in the late 90s for similar reasons. And you know what's interesting is that he's been buying up stakes in companies like Domino's Pizza. Domino's. And Pool Corporation. Uh, interesting. Talk about a contrast to that high-flying tech world. It, yeah, very different. Right. This illustrates a key point about Bucket's strategy. Mm -hmm. He's not afraid to invest in what some might consider boring businesses. Right. He sees value in those companies that provide steady, reliable returns. Domino's, everyone loves pizza. Yeah. Cool corporation. People will always want swimming pools. Exactly. It's about that consistent demand. Exactly. These companies might not be as exciting as the latest tech IPO. Right. But they offer stability and predictability. So how would Buffett apply that idea of intrinsic value that we were talking about to a company like Apple? Well, he would look beyond the stock price. Okay. And delve into the company's financials. Okay. He'd analyze their earnings, their assets, their debt, their management team, and try to determine what that company is actually worth. Based on? Based on its ability to generate profits yeah in the long term so he's not swayed by the hype he's looking at the cold hard numbers exactly now the article brings up this concept of the trump trade oh yeah can you explain what that is and why buffett might not be buying into it sure so the trump trade is this idea that certain sectors like infrastructure and manufacturing okay would benefit from the policies of a second trump administration Good. and this belief led some investors to pour money into those sectors mm -hmm. anticipating significant growth but Buffett doesn't seem convinced. Well, the article suggests that Buffett might view the Trump trade as being driven more by speculation than by real sustainable growth. Okay. He might be concerned about the potential for inflation and economic instability if those policies are implemented. So he's not necessarily against those sectors. He's just questioning whether the current market enthusiasm is justified. Exactly. He's always been wary of market bubbles and hype-driven investing. Right. He's looking for that value, not just the momentum. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked about his aversion to the current market trends, mm -hmm. his preference for those steady businesses. Right. But the article's main theory about this cash pile 
is that he's saving it all up for a major acquisition. Right. So instead of buying individual stocks in a market that he views as overpriced, yeah, no. he might be waiting for the right opportunity to buy an entire company. Like a giant company-sized shopping spree. Exactly. And they suggest that a second Trump administration might make those acquisitions easier. Mm-hmm with potentially lock regulation and a smoother merger and acquisition process. It's certainly a possibility, but even the Oracle faces competition these days. Yeah, because private equity firms are also flush with cash. Exactly. It's a bidding war for companies out there. So it's like a bidding war yeah. for these companies. Yeah. Finding those hidden gems, those undervalued companies, it's getting harder and harder. With so many players in the game. With so many players. Which makes me wonder, why not use some of that cash to buy back their own stock? Right. Seems like a pretty common strategy. It is a common strategy, and that's a good question. Yeah. And it leads us to one of the most intriguing aspects of this whole situation. Mm -hmm. Succession planning. Yeah. What happens to Berkshire Hathaway after Buffett? Because the article quotes an expert who predicts a sell-off of Berkshire stock when Buffett is no longer at the helm. Right. There's concern that investors might lose confidence in the company without Buffett's leadership. Yeah. But having this massive cash reserve would allow them to buy back their own shares if the price drops. Ah. So it acts as a safety net to stabilize the stock price and reassure those investors during a potentially turbulent transition period. Exactly. A way to protect the company's value and ensure a smoother transition. So it seems like this cash pile isn't just about market skepticism. It's also about strategy, long-term vision, and ensuring the future of Berkshire Hathaway, even without Buffett at the helm. Absolutely. It's a reminder that Buffett is always thinking several steps ahead. All right. This is all incredibly fascinating. It is. Let's just take a moment here. Yeah. Let all this sink in for a second. I'm sure our listeners are just as captivated by this as we are. I wouldn't be surprised. It's not every day we get to peek into the mind of one of the world's most successful investors. All right. When we come back, we'll continue our deep dive into Warren Buffett's catch pile and explore some more of the insights from this Fortune article. Sounds good. You know, it's fascinating. Buffett's approach seems to like challenge this idea of buy low, sell high. Yeah. That so many investors like cling to. Right. He's clearly willing to hold back even when the market seems to be booming. Yeah. It's almost like he's saying, I'll wait for the real deals. Yeah. The ones that truly make sense to me. Right. It takes a lot of discipline to resist that fear of missing out. It certainly does. Yeah. And that patience, that willingness to wait for the right opportunity, mm -hmm. it's a hallmark of his style. Yeah. He doesn't mind missing those short-term gains yeah. if it means staying true to his principles. Which is a pretty powerful message, don't you think? It is. Especially in today's world. Yeah. Where it feels like everyone is obsessed with instant gratification and chasing the latest trends. Absolutely. Right. Buffett's approach is a reminder that sometimes the best strategy is to slow down, hmm. think things through, and not get caught up in the market frenzy. It's like he's tuned out all that noise. Yeah. And is like laser focused on his own long term vision. And that independence of thought is a key part of his success. Yeah. He's not swayed by headlines mm -hmm. or by what other investors are doing. He's making decisions based on his own careful analysis. Yeah. And his deep understanding of value. It makes you wonder what is he looking for? in these potential acquisitions. Right. Like what kind of company yeah. is worthy of like a Buffett-sized investment? Well, based on his past acquisitions, it's likely to be a company with strong fundamentals, mm -hmm. a solid management team, and a business model he understands. So he's shown that he's not afraid of these like boring businesses. Right. Like we saw with Domino's and Pool Corporation. Exactly. He seems to gravitate toward companies that are providing essential goods or services okay. that people will always need. Things that aren't going to go out of style. Exactly. Think about it. People will always want pizza. Yeah. They'll always need insurance. Right. Berkshire owns Geico. Exactly. And as long as people have pools, they'll need supplies. Yeah. These aren't flashy businesses. No. But they are reliable and profitable. They are. It's like he's investing in the foundation of the economy. The things that keep the world running rather than the latest fads or trends. And that's a key part of his value investing philosophy. Mm. He's looking for companies that will be around for the long haul. Yeah. The ones that can weather economic storms and continue to generate profits for decades to come. It's interesting how this all ties back to the idea of Berkshire Hathaway without Buffett at the helm. Right. The article suggests that his cash pile could be seen as a way to protect the company's future mm -hmm. even after he's gone. 
That's an insightful observation. Yeah. By having this massive reserve of cash, Berkshire Hathaway would be in a strong position to buy back its own stock right. if there's a sell-off after Buffett's departure. It's like building a fortress to protect the company. It is. Yeah. It's a way to reassure investors and prevent a panic that could devalue the company. Almost like a safety net to ensure a smoother transition. <laughs> Precisely. It speaks to his long-term thinking. Yeah. His commitment to not just his own success, but the success of the company, even after he's no longer at the helm. It's remarkable how he's built this company that's not just about him, right? but about a philosophy, a way of investing that stood the test of time. It's inspiring, really. It's about building something that lasts. Yeah. Something that can continue to generate value for generations to come. This has been an incredibly insightful discussion. It has. But before we wrap up this part of our deep dive, yeah. I'd love to hear your thoughts on one more aspect of Buffett's strategy. All right. The article mentions that some critics argue that Berkshire Hathaway's performance has lagged behind the market Okay. in recent years. Uh huh. Do you think there's any validity to that criticism? Well, it's true that if you look purely at short-term market returns, Berkshire Hathaway might not always be at the top of the charts, right. but I think that misses the point of Buffett's approach. Because he's not playing the short game. Exactly. He's not trying to time the market or chase quick gains. Mm -hmm. He's building a portfolio of solid, well-managed companies that he believes will generate consistent returns over the long term. And that long-term focus is something that often gets overlooked in today's fast-paced world. So in a way, he's almost going against the grain. Yeah. Defying the expectations of a market that's obsessed with immediate results. That's a great way to put it. He's not afraid to be patient. Yeah. To wait for the right opportunities, even if it means missing out on some short-term excitement. And that patience has certainly paid off over the course of his career. It has. But do you think his approach can still be successful in today's market? Yeah. Which feels increasingly volatile and unpredictable. That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. The world of finance has changed dramatically since Buffett first started out. Yeah. We have algorithmic trading. We have meme stocks. We have cryptocurrencies. Right, all these things. All sorts of things that didn't even exist a few decades ago. So can his timeless principles adapt to this new landscape? Well, I think the core principles of value investing, okay. of focusing on fundamentals and looking for long-term value are timeless. Mm -hmm. They've worked for Buffett for decades, right? And I believe they can still work today. But perhaps it requires even more discipline and patience than ever before. Absolutely, because yeah. there are so many more distractions, yeah. so many more opportunities to get caught up in the hype right. and lose sight of the fundamentals. It's like trying to navigate a jungle filled with shiny objects. That's a great analogy. You need to have like a clear sense of direction and the discipline to stay on course. And I think that's where Buffett's example can be so valuable. Right. He shows us that it's possible to achieve extraordinary success yeah. by staying true to your principles by focusing on the long game mm -hmm. and by not getting swayed by the latest fads. Okay, folks, we've covered a lot of ground in this segment. We have. We've talked about Buffett's philosophy, his strategy, his long-term vision. Mm -hmm. But as we move into the final part of our deep dive, yeah, I want to shift gears a bit and explore what this all means for our listeners. Okay, I'm intrigued. What can the average investor, yeah. someone who's not managing billions, uh. take away from his approach? Mm. What can we learn from the Oracle of Omaha? That's what we'll delve into after a quick break. All right, so we spent this deep dive exploring Warren Buffett's massive cash pile and what it reveals about his investing strategy. But let's shift gears a bit now. What can the average investor, someone who's not managing billions, learn from the Oracle of Omaha? That's a, that's a crucial question, isn't it? Because while most of us aren't dealing with Buffett-sized sums, the principles behind his success are surprisingly universal. Okay, so let's break it down. What's the first takeaway our listeners should keep in mind? I'd say the most important lesson is the power of patience. Okay. Buffett isn't chasing those quick wins. Right. He's willing to sit on the sidelines, wait for the right opportunity, even if it takes years. Right. That long-term perspective is essential for building real wealth. It's like that saying, time in the market beats timing the market. Exactly. Trying to predict short-term market swings is incredibly difficult, even for professionals. Yeah. Buffett's approach focuses on finding value that will appreciate over time. And that brings us to the second big takeaway discipline. Yes. It's so easy to get caught up in the hype, the fear of missing out. Absolutely. But Buffett sticks to his principles, doesn't let emotions drive his decisions. 
It's about having a clear investment strategy right. and sticking to it even when the market gets turbulent. Yeah. And it's about doing your research, understanding what you're investing in rather than just blindly following trends. So no more buying meme stocks just because everyone else is. Well, let's just say a carefully researched portfolio of companies with strong fundamentals is likely to be more rewarding in the long run. It's about thinking for yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. Not just going with the crowd. Precisely. Buffett's success is largely due to his independent thinking. Mm. He doesn't follow the herd. Right. He analyzes the situation, forms his own conclusions, and has the conviction to act on them. And sometimes that means being contrarian zigging when everyone else is zagging. Exactly. Think back to his investments in those boring businesses. Yeah. While everyone else was chasing high-growth tech stocks, he saw the value in companies like Domino's and Pool Corporation. And that takes us back to another key lesson, understanding intrinsic value. Yes. It's not about the hype. It's about the underlying strength of a company. Think of it like this. You wouldn't buy a house based solely on what your neighbors say it's worth, would you? No. You'd look at the foundation, the location, the overall condition. You'd want to know what it's truly worth, not just what someone else is willing to pay for it at this moment. Exactly. And that's what Buffett does with companies. Mm -hmm. He digs deep into their financials, looks at their earnings, potential, their management team, and tries to determine their true worth independent of market fluctuations. This has been an incredibly insightful look at Warren Buffett's approach to investing. It has. But as we wrap up, I want to leave our listeners with one final thought. Okay, I'm all ears. In today's world of instant gratification and constant information overload, it's easy to feel overwhelmed, pressured to make quick decisions, chase the latest trend. Yeah, it's the nature of the beast, especially in the financial world. But Buffett's story reminds us that success doesn't always come from being the fastest or the loudest. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it comes from being patient, disciplined, and thinking for yourself. It's about tuning out the noise and focusing on what truly matters. Right. Building a solid foundation for long-term growth. So the next time you're faced with an investment decision, think about the Oracle of Omaha. Yeah. Would he jump on the bandwagon? Or would he take a step back, mm -hmm. analyze the situation, and make a move that aligns with his long-term goals? That's a great way to frame it. Think like Buffett, be patient, be disciplined, and be confident in your own judgment. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of Warren Buffett. And remember, the most valuable investments are often the ones that require a little patience and a lot of independent thinking.